In the common imagination, music tends to compartmentalize itself either cleanly in a major tonality or a minor tonality. If the song sounds happy, it's major, but if it's sad, it's minor. That said, if music has any storytelling power at all, and it, it does, then doesn't that seem to be a pretty pitiful range of emotions? Is the majesty of song really reducible to just varying degrees of two very basic emotions? Luckily, the Dorian Mode says that's not the case. I'm sure in some form or another throughout your life you've heard the wisdom that the space between notes is just as important as the notes themselves. Maybe not in that exact way, but you know, some kind of aphorism I'm sure with the basic takeaway being that contrast is the spice of life. There is something so deeply poetic, not just about sorrow, but sorrow tempered by hope. The sun is beautiful, and an overcast sky is beautiful, but neither quite so beautiful as when crepuscular rays break through the cloud cover. That, to me, is nature's metaphor for the Dorian Mode. The Dorian Mode is the sunlight that breaks through the clouds. In my last video on the Mixolydian Mode, I said that Mixolydian was a mashup of the joy of major with a pinch of the melancholy of minor. If that's indeed the case, then Dorian is just Mixolydian from Bizarro World. It's the dramatic earnestness of minor tempered by the optimism of major. Dorian's characteristic tone is the natural six. Or put another way, if you play something in A minor, but make all the flat sixes, all the Fs that is, into F sharps, then you'd be in the Dorian mode. That natural six blocks what can otherwise be a pretty morose and grim sounding note, which naturally results in a pronounced lift in mood that can manifest in a variety of different ways. One such way is a very warm or cozy sound, if you like. Take Final Fantasy X's Calm Before the Storm, for example. The first section of the tune is a simple vamp between B flat minor and E flat major. During the first bar, the tone is unambiguously set. We're in some kind of minorish tonality, but we don't yet know which one, which I g guess in that case means it is a little ambiguous, but whatever the case, very typical of the somber pensiveness of meandering beneath the dense forest canopy. Once the second bar enters though, and the melody lands on the natural six, the G natural in this case, it's like being awash in a warm rain. The natural six brings us out of a bitterly cold and hmm, lonely forest into a warm, restful sanctuary. The Dorian Mode can do a lot more than just cozy up a scene, though. Indeed, the Dorian Mode, and modes more generally, have many faces and take on many characteristics in different contexts. In the right context, Dorian's Natural Six contains the power to turn a dire, godless endeavor into a resolute mission. Nowhere is this more evident to me than in one of the most beloved tunes in Nintendo's history, The Dark World from A Link to the Past. As Link finds himself in the Dark World for the first time, I wouldn't say it's a happy occasion for him, but after Zelda 2, I think he'll be fine. But in any case, Link, not being one to fold so easily under pressure, sees nothing insurmountable about the Dark World, so much as simply a worthy challenge. As soon as that F major lands, it's as if Link, peering off into the twilight, furrows his brow, adjusts his tunic, picks the wedgie I know he has in that extremely tight outfit and sharply exhales the thought, let's do this through his nostrils. An interesting thing to note about the Dorian mode is that, like most other modes, it's very common to interchange chords and tones with the corresponding major or minor keys. In this case, the natural six of Dorian gets exchanged for the flat six of minor. In the Dark World, notice how the F major is followed immediately by an A flat major. This is very often more a way to establish a strong resolution and less a deliberate aesthetic choice for tone or mood. This A flat lays the groundwork for a strong flat major 6, flat major 7, minor 1 progression that wouldn't otherwise be possible if the tune stuck rigidly to the Dorian mode. Here's what it would sound like if the natural 6 stayed natural and created instead a diminished 6, flat major 7, 1 progression. Ugh, that was kinda yucky. Well, anyway, 
In this case, I'm not going to let practicalities get in the way of the magic and simply imagining it as the music saying, don't get too heroic, we are still in a freaky hellhole wasteland full of booty-busting eldritch horrors, after all. Though the Dark World isn't the start of Link's journey in A Link to the Past per se, it is the start of something, and in general Dorian's mixture of dark with light is uniquely apt for capturing the spirit of new beginnings. In Castlevania Circle of the Moon, as Nathan pencil dives into Dracula's basement and is thrust into the beginning of the first, and the best in my opinion, GBA Castlevania, the first area theme in the game begins to play titled Asleep. No, I'm just kidding. It's, it's called Awake, though I, I, I guess, you know, if you fall 100 feet down to your doom, depending on how you land, you, you might be asleep when you reach the bottom. Now, if that doesn't say Heroic Outset, I struggle to imagine what does. At this point, it might be difficult to imagine just how monumental a difference the Natural Six makes without a proper contrast. To really appreciate what we have, let's imagine a Dorianless world for a moment and replace all of those natural sixes with flat sixes. Hopefully you guys find that as absolutely f***ing hilarious as I do. I made that joke about how Nathan should, by all rights, just die after his 100 foot plummet, and I think Awake, with all flat sixes, may as well just be called Asleep and be the theme for Nathan's unceremonious death, because it sounds sad, pathetic, and flaccid. Continuing the pattern of New Beginnings brings us to Final Fantasy IV. Cecil Harvey, Dark Knight, former captain of the mighty Red Wings of the Kingdom of Baron, and champion hot dog eater, has been exiled and discarded into the world. Bereft of his former glory and his home, he sets out into a strange new world. Though Cecil's situation is far from enviable, his situation isn't hopeless, and the overworld theme makes that clear. After all, what kind of fantasy story would we have if our main character sounded like they were a loser? Well, I guess we kind of know what that would sound like. It would sound like I sleep from Castlevania Circle of the Moon. So far, we've looked at two of the faces of the Dorian mode. It's warm anodyne side, and it's resolute, if uncertain side. But Dorian can also sound a little, well, weird. We've all had dreams before, but you, you haven't? Okay, sorry. Well, for, for us dream havers, we've had dreams that were so surreal yet so prescient of things to come or things that have come before that they haunted us, maybe even still do. Cloud Strife, for certain, has had at least one such dream. As he lay unconscious in Gongaga, 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 he dreams of Aerith in the Sleeping Forest. Not in a weird way, though. Though this track retains the familiar warm qualities of Dorian, it asserts a pretty unique property. In the transition from the third to the fourth bar, a tritone leap occurs between the natural six and the three. This paints a dreamy, surrealistic image that is usually associated with the Lydian mode, but juxtaposed with the muted tonal salve of Dorian instead of the radiant character of Lydian, this tritone sounds not resplendently intense, but dare I say the exact opposite. It sounds sleepy and restful. So that brings us to the fourth and final face of Dorian that I wanted to cover today. Though Dorian dons a unique persona for each situation, each one is unified by an undertow of purity. Dorian is, at its heart, a very pure-sounding mode, whether it be the gallantry of new frontiers or the flush of warmth from sylvan rain. Dorian is held together by its purity and sanctity. One might even say there is a certain religious or spiritual quality to it, and if one did, Symphony of the Night's Lost Painting would make a fine case to that point. Though we get a small taste of the natural six over the C major chord, it's not until the D major in the fourth bar that we get that really heavenly lift that Dorian is so loved for. As if Alucard is transfixed in solemn intercessory prayer for his father's soul. So, there you guys have it. 
The Dorian Mode, the official mode of dreamy forests, new beginnings, resolute determination in the face of an uncertain future, and sacred serenity. Dorian is described a lot as brighter or happier minor, but I've tried to and hopefully succeeded in showing it has the capacity for such incredible nuance that so far exceeds just being happy minor. Anyway, thank you guys for watching. It is my sincere hope that you guys enjoyed the video. And though I'm currently pretty tied down working on finishing up a soundtrack, once I have time like this again, I'll be looking at another mode. So let me know which one you guys would like to see, because I'm not fully sold on which one I'll do next. Anyway, until then, I'll see you guys later.